Hi everyone, welcome to the .NET 6 microservice series. So this is the second video. Okay, in this video, we are going to create a microservice application, which is nothing but a web API application. In that, we are going to implement the products endpoint. Okay. So this is our microservice architecture flow. So here you can see red highlighted box that represents uh, today we are going to implement the products microservice. Okay. So here we are going to do some basic CRUD operations. In that CRUD operations, I, I will implement only create and read operations. Okay. To make our video short. In general, we will implement all the four operations like create, read, update, delete. Okay. So let's jump into create a microservice application, which is nothing but a web API application. Okay. Okay, here I am using .NET CLI command for creating the API project. And here I am naming my API project name as manufacturer.api. Okay. So let's create the project. Okay. Project has been successfully created. Now let's open the project in the Visual Studio Code Editor. Okay, here is our API project and target framework is .NET 6.0. Okay, now let's install NuGet packages like NT Framework Core and SQL NuGet packages. So first let's install Microsoft.NT Framework Core NuGet package. Since I am using CLI, I am going to copy command from here. Install it. Now let's install Microsoft.NTFrameworkCore.SQL server. So this package for communicating with the SQL database. Install it. And we know that we are creating the microservice that contains product endpoint and it consumes the manufactured database right from this diagram. So let's go to my SQL management studio. Here you can see the manufactured database and the product table. Okay, so this table will be consumed by our product endpoint. Okay. So in this we so we are so we are going to use the code first with existing database. First, let's create the uh, class. Okay, that represents our table products. Okay, let's create a folder like data. Set of data, create a folder like entities. Okay, inside of it, let me add my class, table class, that is products.cs. Okay, this is our product class. So let's add the properties that are equivalent to the table column names. Okay, finally, our class looked like this. Now we need to create the database context class. So database context class is nothing but a class that has control over our database. Okay, manufactured database. Okay, so for that, let's create a class inside of the data folder. Okay, I will name it like manufacture context.cs. Okay, this is our manufactured context class. Currently, it is a plain class. Make it database context class. It should inherit DB context. Okay, that, that loads from Microsoft NT Framework Core. And now let's implement the constructor. Context options. Just specify our class name, its type. Okay. Pass the options to the base class. Okay. Now, inside of this context class, we need to register our table class as a PB set. Okay. So, public
okay this is our context class now go to app settings.development.json here let's add the connection string property okay inside of it let me add my uh, manufacturer database connection string okay so let's add a property like okay here let's add database connection string okay after adding the database con connection string let's register our manufacturer context into the program.cs file So to register our DB context into the program.cs file, services dot add DB context and specify the type of our context class. Okay. Use SQL Server and here we need to pass the connection string. So to pass the connection string, builder dot configuration dot get connection string and pass the property name of the connection string. Now Let's create our products controller. Let's add products controller. Okay, here is our controller class. First, let's inject the our database context here. Okay. okay so we have already initially discussed that we are going to create two operations that is create and read operation so first let's uh, implement create operations so that we can add some data into the database okay so let's add my action method Okay, here is our post testing action method. Okay, so it should be a HTTP post request. Okay, so if we have single post method, then we don't need to specify the explicitly route value. Okay, and now here what I can do context dot products dot add our new product. And await manufacture sorry context dot save changes testing. Okay, so it will save the uh, newly added record into the database. Okay, now if you want, you can give directly the newly created record as a response. Okay, but it is recommended is it is always good to re return a get URL. Okay, get endpoint fetches the newly created record by its id okay for that we need to create a get action method okay okay and it is a http get and it will be the secondary get method because i am going to implement the another get method to fetch the collection of data so that's why we need to specify some route value here. In that route value also, I'm going to specify just the ID dynamic value. Okay. So if you open brackets, that means it is a dynamic route value. So this value will be read as the input parameter of the method. Okay. Now uh, product equal to products dot 
find a string directly i can pass the primary key id value okay and i will return okay as a response and the product okay now we have get endpoint by id right so what we will do we will return created at action and here we have to pass the action name that is a get action method right so i can simply say get and it have query properties right so those values i have to pass here so new product dot id and finally i want to return response my newly created object so what this create action method will do it will generate a uh, get action by id this action endpoint url and it will add it to the response header okay and in the response we will see the newly created object so any ui uh, can grab that url for get the details of the newly created record okay and here is small correction i haven't assigned context okay now let's run and test our endpoints okay create endpoint so here you can see we have two endpoints one is for products get by id another one is creating the product so let's go to products post and try to add a record okay okay let's try to post the data and here you can see 201 status created and you can see the newly created record its primary key has some value okay and here you can see in the header response headers in the location value you can see the endpoint was generated by the action method so this value will can be read by ui application so that can get the details of the newly created recorded so if i execute i need to get the data okay so that's all about the uh, create operation okay now let's implement one more action method to fetch all the records from the database okay so it is a overloaded get async method but it will fetch us all the data okay now here i need to decorate with http get i won't give any route okay by default get method will be recognized by the endpoint and i want to get all the products right okay that's it this is our endpoint let's test it and here you can see one more get method okay products so let's try to execute and here you can see we got the response okay so we are done with the uh, create and read operation so here if you observe this entire web api application it's only take care of the products okay products endpoint and it will only deal with the products table in the manufactured database only okay so that means it is very uh, simplified code means only single module of code we are using so this is called microservice okay microservice is nothing but a any, any application with minimum uh, or a separate module of the logic okay here i am dealing with only products with this application i won't implement any other logic into this application if i implement i am going to violate the rule of microservice okay so this is the microservice okay so we have successfully completed our products api endpoint microservice so in the next video in the same way we are going to create the one more microservice application in that we are going to deal with the address api and that address api will communicate with this its own database that is sales business database okay so that is the upcoming video i hope this video has delivered some useful information to you all if you like my video please do support me by subscribing to my channel 
soon we are going to meet with new videos until then signing off